The Face and the Vessel, a comparative analysis of facade design strategies within the context of technology and representation. As the title suggests, our presentation today reflects a series of investigations into the role of facade design strategies in present-day architecture. As educators, we feel compelled to seek out a basis for understanding of facade theories in order to establish a productive dialogue with our students and colleagues. As practitioners, we find this course of inquiry a positive influence on our work. At this point, I believe we've identified more questions than answers, but would like to share our observations with you here today. These slides shown here today are the result of a series of discussions within our office and grow have grown out of a class on facade theory taught at the University of Texas at Arlington. In order to come to a fundamental understanding of facade, we begin with the root definition. The face or identity is seen as a set of variations within a controlled set of norms dictated by the genome. This defines a normative set of expectations one reads in the face when encountering another person. It defines our expectations and sets the course of ensuing action. When those expectations are not met within this known construct, we must develop a new framework of reference in order to understand the disconnect. Like the face, our traditional understanding of facade is understood as a series of variations within a set of normative strategies. These controlled strategies, when encountered within a familiar range, define our expectations and dictates how we experience architecture. Our understanding or reading of facade is connected through history regardless of technology or style. Even though projects may vary greatly, based on our collective understanding of these norms, we may negotiate variations in the experience of architecture. In the book Surface Arch Architecture, Leatherbarrow and Mostafabi outline two primary ways of understanding building image, the first of which is the project of representation. The building image is developed through concept regardless of the types of construction. The final building image is, primar is the primary concern and may often be at odds with normative construction tectonics. The second of these ideas is the development of building image by the application of the methods of production. The final building image is read as the application of rational tectonics of construction and has its roots in a vernacular way of thinking. It is undeniable that the development of building image throughout history has been influenced by the implementation of available building technology. These early structures represent the concepts of tectonics and stereotomics as outlined by Gottfried Semper and show a direct relationship between construction methodology and building image. The project of representation is absent. The monumental architecture of the Egyptians and Greeks represents a refinement of the technology of the trabeated system. The building image is developed through a direct expression of structure, either by reading the wall as mass or by the implication of surface by structure. It is limited by its means of construction. The ancient Greek culture was concerned with notions of beauty, proportion, and order, and thereby developed the first system systematized project of representation, which was applied as a control to the existing tectonic language. The Romans provide the first major material advancement with the introduction of concrete coupled with fired brick. This allowed for the development of the arcuated system and shows a direct relationship between structure and surface. The Romans also adapted the Greek orders as applied ornamentation in Thomas Schumacher's The Skull and the Mask, he points out the atectonic contrast between structure and surface, whereby the applied ornamentation of the post and lintel system spans a greater distance than the structural bay of the arch. Building technology, with a few notable exceptions, remains essentially unchanged for the ensuing centuries. One of those exceptions is the Gothic period, which is seen as a refinement of stacked stone technology. During the Renaissance, the rediscovery of ancient technologies and modes of thought brought about a shift from a building image derived from technology of construction to pure representation. The building image is still limited by stacked stone technology and therefore has a limited spatial potential. <laughs> 